uh, I work for Red Hat, but my uh, my uh, presence here, uh, and I'm very grateful for it, is uh, due to the the uh, Cost Cup organizers and the uh, Gunnum Foundation, of which I'm a board member. And I'm going to talk to you about uh, my sofa. I don't know about you, but when I'm uh, when I'm sitting down in my lounge and uh, and I want to uh, and I want to uh, look up. Uh, something, for example, on Wikipedia, on IMDb, and uh, and I don't want to have to open up my laptop, wait for it to connect to the internet, and all that sort of thing. What I really want to do is being able to uh, to very simply um, take uh, a tablet and and uh, look uh, look at what I'm uh, I'm actually searching for very quickly, and um, it stops having. Uh, Many uh, many types of devices on uh, um, on my uh, on my coffee table. So uh, I think that tablets are the new El Dorado. We've got an awful lot of uh, vendors uh, selling tablets. I think that a couple of them are actually sponsors of Coscup, such as uh, HTC, uh, Intel. I've put a lot of work on tablets. For example, on the uh, they are working towards uh, Migo on tablets. Uh, we've got one less hardware vendor for tablets uh, after yesterday. HP said that they would not be making, uh, they wouldn't be selling new tablets and new WebOS hardware. So it's going to make my uh, my talk a uh, uh, little bit different. Um, we've got a lot of uh, different OSs. If you if you want to build a tablet, um, you can. There are only so many uh, different OSs that are available to you. You can't just go and, and select, for example, Windows 7 and, and put it on your tablet. Uh, this would end up uh, being a, a battery hog. Uh, it would be a proprietary application. Uh, you, Windows is just not a very credible alternative to put on, on, on tablets. Uh, we've got iOS, but the problem with iOS is that it's it's non-free. It's it's only Apple that can use it. Um, then you can use WebOS. So uh, from yesterday, uh, from yesterday it was uh, it used to be HP only, and nowadays it's just it doesn't have hardware. Nobody makes hardware with WebOS on it anymore. And we've got Android. Uh, the main problem with Android is that. Um, it's owned by Google, and I think I think you'll see uh, you'll see there's a there's a bunch of talks about Android uh, during the conference, and um, one of the questions that keeps coming back is, where is the source code? It's supposed to be um, it's supposed to be open, it's supposed to be uh, available to everyone, but it's it's really not. It's just Google make that uh, make that operating system. And give it out to a few select, uh, a few select hardware vendors. And you need to be one of Google's best friends if you want to have access to the hardware, to the uh, software, as soon as it's ready. So you've got an awful lot of, uh, of tablets right now which are still running on on uh, all the versions of Android, Android 2.2, for example, and they're not actually allowed to put a sticker on on the box saying it is Android because they are using it on a tablet when it was supposed to be used only on phones. So th there is an opportunity for something else. What that something else will be, um, I'm going to talk about in a second. But let, let, let's let's back up a little bit. As I, as I told you, I'm I'm uh, I work on uh, on GNOME. And um, I've been working on GNOME for, uh, for uh, quite a while. Um, at the very beginning, just being a, a build monkey, I was helping making sure that uh, all the applications uh, could build on, on power PCs. Now, absolutely nobody cares about it, but, but it, was, it was how I got into it. And we just released, um, we just released GNOME 3, and I think you can recognize the... Uh, you can recognize the screenshot. It's uh, it's the one that's on gunum3.org. It's probably nicer than uh, anything that I could uh, that I could do. Um, the the goal 
in GNOME, and what we've been doing for the past number of years is trying to make GNOME into that much more um, integrated and and um, and full-on um, uh, operating system and system. Uh, what we want to do is be able in GNOME to say, well, I want my network to work in a certain way. I want to provide that particular user experience when I when I talk to uh, when I talk to Wi-Fi, uh, when I talk to a 3G modem, when I talk to uh, to a wired network. When I plug it in, I want it to uh, to go directly and try to connect rather than me having to click a button to do it, all that sort of thing. And um, this is what we've been trying for a number of years to do in GNOME, and, and very slowly we, we are actually doing that. So one of the examples uh, is Pulse Audio. Uh, a number of people will know about Pulse Audio being that thing that causes problems for sound. The thing is that it's, it's been a couple of years already, and Pulse Audio had a couple of bugs, but the majority of the bugs were in the kernel. And you can see how it's important to have from the kernel to Pulse Audio to um, the applications that sit on top of, of Pulse Audio, that you have that stack, that you have people working all the way through the stack, making sure that the drivers work well, so that Pulse Audio can work well, so that on top of it, we can provide a decent experience. That means having things like uh, being able to plug in a USB microphone or a headset and have it work directly for Skype, for example. Or being able to uh, turn on your Bluetooth headset just when somebody calls you, not before you start any audio application, which was what you needed to do in the past. And that also means that within a couple of clicks, we can get 5.1 support, for example, on your system. You plug in the sound card, you say, I want 5.1 and well you can you can play a film in in all its uh, grandiose uh, 5.1 sound so i already talked about network manager and the work that we're trying to do the user experience that we're trying to bring with that and there are a number of other things that we're starting to rely more on in uh in uh, in gnome that's uh you dev you power you disk and 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 it's pretty much the same thing where we have uh we have very low-level um, uh, APIs given to us by the Linux kernel. And on top of that, we build. So we've got uPower for everything that's related to power. It will show you batteries. It will make sure that uh, broken batteries don't appear, appear a certain way and that you don't get bro broken percentages in, in your UI, etc. cetera. Udisk providing same thing, an API that's uh, very easy to use on top of what the kernel gives you. The kernel is very raw, and UDisk just provides you with uh, a way, uh, a decent API on top of whatever the kernel provides. And that's that's pretty much the problem for every single one of those frameworks. When you talk about Pulse Audio, the Network Manager, uh, UDev, UPower, UDisk, you, the only thing you, that you're trying to do is hide the kernel because most of the time it's written by, by people who, have, uh, who have, uh, don't know what the experience should be. So it's very raw, it's very, uh, it's very uh, centered on the hardware. And then we have systemd, which we started using very recently uh, in GNOME for very small things. So in GNOME 3.2, for example, you'll be able to have a single host name for all your services. Uh, that means that, for example, instead of having uh, my, my computer be called Linux, it will be Bastion's laptop. And um, that particular host name will be used for all the, um, all the externally visible services that my laptop exports. That also means that, for example, my uh, my the Bluetooth name of my laptop, same thing, that host name. And we want to start using systemd more and more for different things. For example, um, uh, date and time uh, configuration is going to be done is going to be done through uh, systemd through little helpers. And 
as time goes on, I think we'll start using more and more systemd because it provides us with a good way of poking at very small, uh, very small configuration, very system-centric configuration. So you, as you can see, GNOME is becoming much more of an OS. And we have a, we have a, a few plans for the future. So I already talked about the integration with the stack. So that's the kernel, that's Network Manager, Pulse Audio, et cetera, and GNOME on top of that, or the UI. Well, what we really want to do is stop calling it stop calling it GNOME on top and then the services in the middle and then the kernel at the bottom. What we really want to do is say, well, to make to make up GNOME you need you need that sort of a kernel with that sort of a feature. You need those bits in the middle that are part of the stack and you need all those libraries at the very top of it to make up the user experience. Uh, just like we've done for GNOME 3.0, we want to start shipping OS images. And what we want is be able to give out to, uh, to the media, to the users, to the developers. We can give them an OS image and we can tell them, you can boot that inside uh, a virtual machine. You can boot that on a, on a desktop PC, on a laptop, and have it have it be a GNOME 3.2 or GNOME 3.0 version. And then you can test your applications really easily. You can see whether such and such application is going to, how it's going to interact with the rest of the system. And that, that means that, for, especially for developers, you've got one target. You've got one target. You've got that GNOME 3.2. Does it work or does it not work on that? And um, that means that you get something that's um, so you get something that's better tested. You get something um, you get a single target for um, all your uh, all your applications. Um, it's very similar to what um, Apple does, or even or even uh, Microsoft. And they will when you start downloading an application, they will tell you, well, you need that version of Mac OS X. You need that version of Windows with that s service pack, otherwise things aren't going to work. And for journalists, we can give them the CD and they can say, well, I'm going to test that, test it, and have the integrated experience. If they try, if they try to use GNOME on, on one distribution, for example, that distribution might do things slightly differently. They, uh, they think, well, that is what GNOME actually wants to use, for example, Network Manager. But my distribution does things slightly differently. So every now and then, I might not have to use Network Manager. I might want to use Conman instead. I might want to use nothing at all for my network, and, and I want to handle it myself. Well, this isn't the experience that we want with GNOME. This isn't what we want to give up to people. That, that's not what we want them to test. We want them to test something that, th um, that has a unified experience. So what's the relation between, between GNOME, the OS images, um, and, and that vertical integration with tablet OSs? Well, we want GNOME to be one of the options for uh, tablet devices. One of the good things with GNOME is that we've got open development as opposed to open source but closed development at Google on Android. We are obviously free and open source software, unlike, for example, WebOS, which is going to be uh, probably one of the uh, things licensed in the future to hardware makers. We are community based, which means that uh, in terms of governance, uh, we are in charge of our own destiny. We don't rely on a third party to give us um, to give us money to to be able to carry on. But one of the big things that we will need to make GNOME useful and to uh, to make GNOME work is on tablets is hardware. 
So I know that um, a few of you probably work for uh, for companies that uh, that make those tablets. And it would be great if you could come and talk to us, talk to uh, talk to GNOME, and um, make sure that your um, Linux drivers are all up to scratch and everything is moved upstream. And very slowly, we will be able to start making tablets with GNOME on it. And the plan is, think, think about the number of people that you know around you that are not geeks like us, that wouldn't come to this conference. Think about them and think, what do they use? They are, some of them already use Linux in some way. And it would, wouldn't, wouldn't it be even better if they could use GNOME, if they could use the same experience that you use on your desktops, on their tablets, maybe in the future on phones, I think I think that in terms of user experience and open governance, um, GNOME is way ahead of um, all the other open source projects, and and certainly it's way ahead of uh, not that uh, not that free uh, uh, OSs like Android and completely non-free like like um, Web OS or, or Windows. So the GNOME tablets are coming. We've got hardware. Um, I, w I would. I would show you this um, very nice piece of hardware. Um, it's made, get, some of you might recognize it, no? It's, uh, it's made by uh, Pegatron in Taiwan. <laughs> so if you just give me one second, the, uh, the machine is, is booting up. It's running Fedora right now. But um, I'm gonna do a short demo uh, with the, a few of the features that we've, uh, we've included in GNOME 3.2 in terms of uh, tablet integration. And, and I'm gonna take some questions now. Questions, GNOME, tablets, touch screens. Any question? Hello, um, wow. Um, Will this work on, on Migo as well later on? Because uh, Intel is doing a lot of stuff for like tablets and so on in mainland China, right? I know, I know that, yeah, there is a, a, a lot of people interested in, uh, in Migo. One of the reasons why I didn't mention Migo was because I was expecting something to happen with the Migo project in terms of uh, netbooks in the past and things have been slightly postponed. So I, I don't want to get into too much details, but uh, um, it would have brought Migo and GNOME much closer than they already are. But um, one of the main difference between, uh, that I see between GNOME doing work on tablets and uh, Migo doing work on tablets, by the way, we're using the same, um, the same reference hardware, which is uh, the, the WeTab, aka XOPC in the US. And, um, and uh, the, the main difference between those two is that um, Migo is supposed to be uh, open governance, again, uh, project, but it's, it's really owned right now by Intel through the Linux Foundation. I really wish that the Linux Foundation was a bit more um, try more to shake up Migo and that decisions, uh, Migo's board and, and people making technical decisions within Migo were uh, there on merit, were elected, were very much like every other uh, big open source project that they could, uh, they could have elections. Uh, you know, be it Debian, be it Fedora, be it uh, even Ubuntu, uh, I've done that. They have committees, they have people that get elected. And right now, Migo is, is just Intel's puppet, if you see what I mean. Um, and for example, it's, it's absolutely impossible to run, uh, to run Migo on anything but on uh, Intel hardware. So if you've, got, uh, if you've got, for example, something that's AMD based with a Radeon video card, well, it's not gonna work on Migo. And I think that's a great shame because in terms of OS, it's probably, it's, it's up there, but Intel doesn't, wants to be able to sell hardware to go with Migo. And if they allow AMD to do that, they can't. Um, 
So I think that's why in, in GNOME, we've got absolutely no qualms about allowing um, Intel or AMD or all that sort of drivers. As long as you've got a decent OpenGL support, and then it's fine. Yes? Well, another question is that uh, currently we know that uh, we the Linux BX servers suffering from the X server not being too so too ex effic uh, efficient, right? Uh, so we we are seeing some some code wavelengths being talked and developing. So currently, the you mean the GNOME tab pad you you are holding now is using c the default X window or uh, you have. We, you, you, you guys have tried to manage to use Wayland. Um, in, well, right now, I'm, I'm, uh, so I'm going to show you this, uh, this tablet, and it's running. So it's running a, a Fedora, somewhat. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try and, and launch something up while I answer to you. Um, the um, Um, we haven't tried using Wayland just yet. Wayland is definitely on the plans. GNOME Shell, as as a compositor, is already much closer to uh, to being able to be part of that uh, solution. Before, in the GNOME 2 days, we would just wouldn't have been able to run that on top of Wayland. Wayland will happen in the future. It will happen probably at the same time as Migo starts using it so that they can flesh out an awful lot of the, uh, an awful lot of the problems. But um, in the next couple of years, work on Wayland will happen and GNOME Shell will be one of the things that we can run on top of Wayland. I hope that answers your question. Anybody else? One of the big deal with tablets it's and mobile, it's probably the applications, right? Um, yes. You need applications. You need touch-capable applications. Yes. Uh, I know GNOME. Uh, I know how it works. Uh, I see the GTK buttons. And I'm wondering what, I mean, how, what's your plan for that? How is it, how is it going to work? Well, the, the, this I, I want GIMP on my tablet. GIMP probably wrong example. <laughs> uh, but... Uh, th there's, there's two ways that we can bring, um, that we will be able to bring uh, touch-based and, and uh, touch-enabled applications. One way, the probably the hardest way, is the work that we're doing right now on, on GTK to, uh, to add support for touch screens and very touch-specific events so that you would, um, if you were to write a core application to GNOME, for example, say, uh, movie player or web browser, you want, the, uh, you want it to act in a different way, whether you're using a touch screen, uh, multi-touch, or whether you're using a mouse. Those are things that um, uh, are being worked on. Um, a hardware maker uh, gave us some money uh, a couple of years ago to, to work on that. We had a bidding process within the GNOME community, and Igalia did some work on adding adding support and porting some of the stuff that used to be on the uh, Nokia N900 onto, uh, onto GTK upstream. And this is getting pushed for the next versions of GTK. So that's one way that we can, that we can help have better touch-enabled applications. The second way uh, is a very simple one. You, you will be part of it. And so, so will Jan. It's web technologies. The thanks to, well, thanks all because of the uh, the iPad and the iPhone, an awful lot of websites are touch enabled. Uh, some of them through extensions, and I hope that they will be all that will be merged into uh, HTML proper, so it's possible to write non Apple specific websites that are touch enabled. But the the majority of the uh, of the work is probably going to be on getting uh, getting those web applications working well on on the Linux desktop, whether touch screen or mouse based. And and suddenly you get 
you get those tons of applications for free. So yeah, we are going very much in the same direction as the, uh, as the work that Mozilla is doing. And I really hope that instead of doing things on their own, uh, I know that um, Mozilla and, and Firefox have got um, this boot to gecko um, project ongoing, but they're, they are only interested in, in providing the, the very top and I think, and, and leaving it up to, for example, Android to provide all the lower levels of the stack. I would hope that they would be interested in working with GNOME instead of working with Google to, uh, to work on that. Well, you, you work with Google in some way in that you are using Android. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm, this is going to be very short. Um, I think that I'm going to be running out of time in terms of uh, in terms of uh, questions and demos. So, um, as you've seen, as you've seen in the screenshot, um, this is uh, this is a GNOME application. This is Nautilus with the on-screen keyboard, and it actually works. And uh, I can also show you the same thing, but in a, in a in portrait mode, and this also works, and uh, most of the code is already upstream. In the future, what we want to do is make this much smoother and make this a, a real alternative to, uh, to the tablets that you've been using, and I really hope that um, you'll, you will be able to help us uh, make GNOME uh, a useful alternative on, on tablets. Thank you. 我想待会很多